Hello, my name is Jeff Hajik and I am the founder of Valaction Continuous Improvement. The video you are about to watch comes from Valaction's Data Collection DVD, which is available for purchase at www.valaction.com. That's www.valaction.com. This DVD is part of the data collection module of our Lean Training System. This group of materials takes an a la carte approach to continuous improvement education. Whether you are trying to learn more yourself or teach a team, you'll find just the components you need. Now enjoy the video and thanks for watching. And then as you start thinking about data, um, there's, there's really a, a tree of the types of data that you can have. So data is, is a pretty broad term. And, and most people categorize it into two main views. And the first is the quantitative data. And, and, and you know where you're going. Obviously, the other one is qualitative. But in the quantitative piece of it, you have, you have the continuous or variable data, and then you have discrete data. So continuous data would be when you say, how tall is the person? It can be any number along a scale. And obviously, you're not going to have a 40-foot tall person. But anywhere within that range, it could be any of an infinite number of decimals. You know, you can have anywhere along a sliding scale that you're not fixed at what you can choose. Discrete data would be something like how many wheels are on the vehicle that you're looking at. And generally, it'll be two for a motorcycle, three for a, a three-wheel ATV, four for a truck, six for a dually. There's just a finite number of choices. And when you have that finite number of choices, it becomes discrete data. Now, on the qualitative side, you have the open questions. And those are when you leave the uh, you know, comment section on a questionnaire. You're going to get a piece of information that doesn't um, collate neatly. You can't, con you can't consolidate it very neatly when you ask, how did you like your burger at a, at a fast food restaurant? You know, people are going to put a, any of a variety of pieces of information there, and it's still data. It's not data that's easily parsed out. But on the other side, you have something called attribute data. And this is when you have a specific, um, you know, an, an, a specific thing from a set of possible answers. And what you'll find is that people often lump attribute and discrete data together. So if you have attribute data where it's like a color, it's, it's sometimes discrete and attribute data are used in, interchangeably as terms. And I just break it down like this for, for my own convenience here as, as I look at it. And it gives a little bit more structure to how you approach looking at your data types. But uh, just keep in mind that you may see those things used interchangeably. So sometimes you hear attribute data used to describe things like number of wheels on a car. Um, but anyway, for the attribute data, there's two basic things. When you look at a set, you'll have a sequence set, which is called ordinal data. And that just means that you have small, medium, large, or some kind of logical sequence to it. And then you have nominal data, which is just a random pile of, of possible answers, like the type of pets in, in a city. So you have all this different breakdown of data. And generally, you know, there may be more ways to look at it. But almost any piece of data you have will fit into one of these five ends of this tree. So let's take a look at some examples of this data. Well, first is continuous. If you say how long is something or how tall is somebody, 1.2341 meters is a piece of continuous or, or variable data. If you ask, like I said, a number of wheels on a truck, that is a discrete piece of information or piece of data. Ordinal, a lot of Likert scales, or you know, when you have the, the five little bubbles you fill in, that'll be set up as ordinal, very satisfied, satisfied, average, unsatisfied, things like that. Nominal data, as I said, pets, it's a group, you can pick from that group, but it's a very finite amount of, of possible answers you have. And of course, the open answers is, please describe your shopping experience. So I could ask that question on a questionnaire as people purchase things off of my website. So I can, I can get open data like that. Now the benefit of open data is you, you don't limit the possible answers a person gives you, but you do have a lot more um, time that you have to commit to really going through that data and, and figuring out what people mean. So now the issue with data, as you decide what kind of data you have, you want to make sure that you can put the data to use properly. And generally, you can go from height to a grouping of tall, medium, short, based on some um, criteria, and then you can take that into a percentage when you, when you, uh, you know, aggregate, aggregate your data, and, and this would be something like yield if you have, you know, 27% failover rate. You know, you'd have a percentage there, 
and you can go in this direction very easily when you have a very specific piece of information such as that height 1.2341 you can go down to the percent of people who are tall very easily but if you just have a number as a percentage if you have a 27 percent yield or 32 percent tall it's harder to go and break down in the other direction so you can't take a yield number and figure out what the actual averages or you know readings were or or the distribution of the actual information at the front of it so keep in mind that as you gather the data and start thinking about how much effort you want to put into it, try to predict whether you're going to need to go back and forth on it. So obviously, taking a, a, a tape measure out and measuring people is a lot harder than eyeballing whether they're tall, medium, or short as they walk into a restaurant or something like that. So the data, again, the more precise you get and the more um, you know, usable and flexible the data is, the higher the cost. The video you just watched came from the Data Collection DVD. It is part of one of the many modules in our Lean Training System. You can purchase it at the link on the screen. You can also register for free at www.valaction.com to download several forms you can use to improve your operation. These include a policy deployment matrix, standard work forms, and a variety of Kaizen tools. Again, thanks for watching and best wishes on your Lean journey.